Is there a property out there that we've looked at that you've done a deal that you can talk about so that uh, they can see the real live example? Uh, not only did you show them, only here's what happened and, and how it happened. Yeah. Well, um, of course, I, what I've discovered after doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals, <laughs> every property has got its own story. Now, a lot of them are similar, but some of them are very different. So when you just mentioned the bus tour, uh, what came to my mind is a recent bus tour that we did right here in my area. Um, in fact, it was just a few short months ago. Uh, you'll recall, I referred to it Chaffee as the farmhouse. You remember the farmhouse uh -huh. deal? Uh -huh. Farmhouse. Yep. The owner of the property responded to the postcard. Now the call to action on the postcard was we only gave one call to action on the postcard. And that was to, to just call, to just give us a call to I actually said, call Kim at this number. Kim's my acquisitionist, call Kim. And so that phone number actually went to our answering service. All right. Here's why Kim sometimes may be talking to another seller and is on the phone and can't answer the phone. So this, this service that we have is a live operator at the service. And the, even if they hang up, we capture 100% of the phone numbers because our service, even though it's got one of our local numbers, it's driven by an 800 service. And Chaffee, some of our viewers and listeners may not know that when your phone number is either an 800 number or an 877 number, toll free number, and that's what's driving it. And that's what they're really responding to, even though it may show us a local number, you cannot call her ID block. You cannot block an 800 number. So we get 100% of the phone numbers. Okay. When someone calls in. So then of course, Kim uh, returns her call, texts them, does everything she can as quickly as possible to get the seller on the phone. Now here's a very, very interesting, beginning of this story. And that is Kim got the seller on the phone. We got the owner on the phone. Come to find out the owner lived in Chesapeake, Virginia. So we're here in Eastern North Carolina and the house had been vacant for something like three or four years at least. Um, and so he gave his initial numbers over the phone. He wanted $80,000 and it was free and clear $80,000. Uh, got our realtor to do the research even before we go and look at it and the after repaired value before we added a whole nother bedroom. And I mean, a whole nother walk-in closet and bathroom. And the after repaired value was going to be something like 125,000, 130,000, something like that. And I said, well, those, those numbers are sounding pretty good. I don't know what the repairs are yet because we haven't been. So I was in town. So my acquisitionist and myself, we set a meeting and the owner comes down from the, uh, comes down from Chesapeake, meets us at the house. We walk through, this house is a wreck. Now, now that's not normal, Jay, right? That an out of state owner would come to the property and meet you and walk through it. You know, I'm closing on a, on a house this coming Monday and the people just contacted us just a few short days ago. They're driving down from Ohio to North Carolina for the closing. Bought another house not too long ago. The people, the owners are in the state of Washington. They didn't come to closing in North Carolina. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it really sort of depends on how sure. far away they are, you know, kind of thing. So it, it goes both ways. It goes both okay. ways. I, I was a little surprised the people were coming all the way down from Ohio to tell you the truth. Um, but nonetheless, good question. So we met the owner there at the house um, and oh, oh my word. Oh my word. This house was built in 1945 out in the country on two acres plus of land. The, the house is not habitable. Um, it's never had central heat or central air in it. Um, the foundation, the, it's on cinder blocks is the foundation. <laughs> And so, I mean, you just, I mean, the rooms are small. I mean, the layout is the old timey like farmhouse where there's a center part, like you walk in the front door and there's no hallways. 
There's no hallway. You walk in the front door, you got your living room, and then there in the center of the house is like a box. And off of this box is the bathroom. There's only one bathroom and three bedrooms. And then come by around over here and there's the kitchen and that's it. So it's like a little house on the prairie, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I said to Kim, I said, you know, we're going to have, I'm going to have to get the contractor here to, you know, the contractor couldn't meet us on this initial visit. I said, see what you can get the seller down to before he drives back to Chesapeake. So she calls me up, says, we finished the visit. The lowest he'll go is $60,000. I said, well, I can already tell you this ain't going to be a deal. I mean, if I'm buying it at 60 and I got this huge rehab to do, probably going to need to add another bathroom and a walk-in closet and everything's got to be redone. The kitchen's got to be gutted. I mean, you know, it's, it's from start to finish. And so anyway, I got the contractor out there anyway, because here's what I'm leading up to Chaffee and everybody. Cause here's the deal. Here's the biggest lesson from this deal, the biggest lesson. And the lesson is, and then we'll get to the numbers in a second. The biggest lesson is regardless of what the seller says is the least they'll take. You don't know. I don't know. And the seller doesn't know what they're going to do until you make the offer. All right. So even when they say, I'm not going a penny less than X, they just may not know how much lower they'll go until they actually have an all cash, no contingency, no, no, don't have to get approved for a loan, no appraisals, no inspections, clean offer. Now they, they already went from 80 to 60. 60. 80 so, to 60. So that's 80. their bottom line. That's, that's all they're going to take. <laughs> so I get the contract to go out there. And by the time we do all this rehab stuff, this is going to be an $80,000 read. So let's run those numbers real quick. If I got to buy it at 60 and I'm going to put 80 in it, I got 140 in it. And maybe the way I do it, you know, it's, it's going to appraise, you know, for a while. So here's the, here's, here's the good news. I got two pieces of good news. So I got my realtor to rerun the numbers. I said, look, here's what we're going to do upstairs because it had an unfinished upstairs at it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to add a bathroom. I'm going to add a, you know, add a walk-in closet. We're gutting the kitchen, bringing it all up, but keeping the integrity of an old farmhouse, but everything's brand new. Okay. But it, you know, but we've got the rustic look. We're able to bring back the, 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 the pine floors in the living room and in the bedrooms. Bottom line, now the new after repaired value is going to be $175,000 after we do all this. Well, the 60 grand still doesn't work, right, even at the right. 175. You know, I've got 145 in it by the time you buy it with closing costs, sell it with closing costs, there's still no spread. So we ran the numbers. I got back up with my acquisitions. I said, offer the seller $20,000. And she says, there is no way. I said, <laughs> well, first of all, we don't know that. And secondly, we must justify the offer. We must justify the offer to the owners. Uh, I am not trying to quote unquote, steal this house because now let's run the numbers. If I've got 20 in it and then I put 80 in it, I'm always going to have overruns, right? And right, I'm going right. to have carrying costs. I don't know how long this house is going to sit before it sells. Uh, but I do know a really, really nice farmhouse in the country on two plus acres where you could put horses on it or whatever could be in high demand. So she makes the offer of 20,000. She justifies the offer. She tells the owners the repair costs. We don't know how much the carrying costs are going to be. And here's the minimum. Here's a big justification. The owner out of state, this is a non-performing asset. They're new, never moving back here. They've been renting it out for over 20 years. It's going to take a minimum of 25,000 plus just to get it habitable to rent it out and how long is it going to take for them to get their 25 grand out by renting it out at whatever, $900 a month or even a thousand dollars a month kind of thing. Guess what? I bought the house for $20,000. All right. So 20, wow. I put 80 in it, put it on the market um, at 175. I'll put it on the market on a Friday, on a Friday afternoon. By Sunday, we had multiple offers. We went under contract on Monday. 
for 173 within $2,000 of list. And so what are the lessons that you hear in that story, Chavi? Well, we went through that property before you listed it, right, Jay? Correct. We and weren't so the students, with it on the bus tour. Yeah. So the students got to see the finished product. Yes. And all that you did and everything with it. Um, so, so they got to see the fact that you bought this property for 20,000, which was 40,000 below the lowest number they're going to take right? Low. <laughs> and 60,000 right. under their asking. So, right. I mean, that's, that's right. the huge question there is, is or uh, lesson there is you never know what they're going to take. And as long right. as you can justify what you're offering, then uh, there, the possibility is still there that they're going to take much less than, um, you know, what they want. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, the, you know, the other thing that comes along is back to the postcard campaign. Okay. So I would not have gotten that deal if I did not practice a very, very important uh, business practice that I have in my business. And that is consistent marketing, seeking motivated sellers. Absolutely. And on the average, uh, it takes 15 completed property lead sheets, and here's a lead sheet right here. I'm going to cover the people's name for the sake of confidentiality, but that's what a property lead sheet looks like. We get the information, we get the seller's information, you know, information about the property. We get the mortgage information in the case we can buy it subject to the existing note. And if you don't know what buying to the buying subject to the existing note is, um, get to the live event. I go into detail about that. So, you know, consistent marketing to have motivated sellers coming in uh, into what we call your pipeline or your funnel. And um, without the consistency, you know, you're going to be missing out on a ton of deals. Right, Jay? Yeah. Now, now I want to uh, point out that for you, Jay, it takes about 15 property lead sheets because you've refined your process. Right. Uh, you have your lead gen going out. You have your acquisitions. This, they know exactly how to ask those questions. For a newer investor, it might take 25 or 30 or, or more property lead sheets before they actually refine their process and really understand how to negotiate those deals and get those deals done. That's correct. Um, That's right. Exactly. That's a good point. That's a good point.